Tower Bridge is a town of over 50,000 population in North Worcestershire. In 1959, Tower Bridge had a traffic problem. Situated on the edge of the Birmingham conurbation, it lies on the commuter routes between the rural areas of the Green Belt to the west and south and the industrial areas to the east and north. One, Shrewsbury two, Lionel Ainsworth at the death for the Shrews, who's possibly scored the winner in League Two. In comes across from Philip John and a great header from Shane Killock. That's five for Telford. It was a great corner. Up it came to the edge of a six-yard box. Killock with a great header, heading it down into the back of the net. Football League's bottom club, Plymouth, entertained Stourbridge in what turned out to be a cracker. Warren Feeney put the Pilgrims into an early lead with this brave header at the far post. But it was cancelled out before half-time as Aaron Drake nodded home to level for the visitors, much to his teammates' delight. Ryan Rowe scored this cracking lob shortly after the break to put the Glass Boys in front for the first time. Cue jubilant scenes which were cut short when Plymouth's player manager Carl Fletcher equalised with 20 minutes remaining with this deflected strike. The Devonshire side were then reduced to 10 men. Robbie Williams was sent off for hauling down Rowe in the area. 
and Sean Gevis made no mistake from the spot. But just as the Southern Premier side were on the verge of FA Cup glory, Onis Moore Becerra scored this fantastic solo effort to level the tie. Connor Hurahan was then sent off for Plymouth for a second bookable offence, but Stourbridge didn't have enough time to make their man advantage count. But they well deserved a replay and more celebrations. Well, Gary, it's uh, been an incredible to obviously game down at, uh, at Plymouth today. Uh, six goals, and then this week you've done 700 miles, seen 12 goals in two games in four days. I mean, is this uh, the most incredible week you've had as Stourbridge manager, or you've had a few? It's been a long week. Uh, it's been an enjoyable week, and uh, you know, roller coaster of emotions today. There were, there were good times, bad times, good luck, bad luck. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we've come down to a football league team away from home and played very well, and uh, you know, three three. So it's all to play for in uh, ten days' time. That's Billingham and Geddes. Decent play here now. It's. Sean Evans, Evans, Ryan Rowe! Good save. One in the air by Lloyd. And here now is Paul Bignot. Evans comes across and caught him. Oh, what happened there? Evans claims he was caught there by the studs of Bignot now. Across comes the referee here. Scott Matheson, red card. In goes Geddy's corner, and McCown! Oh, the black country is bouncing with Stourbridge celebration. Paul McCone, the builder, works with his father, has here put his name in FA Cup law for this season. Now, Sean Geddes, Geddes for Ryan Rowe. Rowe shot, saved. Evans has done it. Sean Evans for Stourbridge. And that might just seal it for Stourbridge. The one time trainee for Manchester United makes it two for the Glass Boys, and round two looms large. Stourbridge two, Plymouth nil in the first round FA Cup replay. A famous night, a landmark night in the history of Stourbridge Football Club. Never been in the second round before. Uh, the Glass Boys are shining brightly after their FA Cup victory. They play in the seventh tier of English football. They're now through to the second round of the FA Cup, having beaten League Two Plymouth. And they deserved their victory. It's great when you see a football club like Starbridge and the entire community getting behind them, uh, building and making progress. Yeah, and of course, you know, as much as it's a great FA Cup run, they'll be looking to get into the conference. I mean, they're, they're the seventh in the Evo Stick Southern Premier and... Uh, you know, with the, if they win the games in hand, they'll go to the top of that. And this is a, a football club going places. And um, as, as the manager says, what, what he wants to do is get players from below them to bring... He's not looking to get players from above in, in, in higher divisions and bring them down. So he's really looking to build this club. He's been here nine years, so we've given him time and it shows. This is Freeman for Stevenage, in by Freeman, turned away, back in by Bostwick, Solly saves, Beardsley, goal! Well, Solly could not keep them out, all on his own. It's Byron Harrison, this could finish it, that has finished it, Beardsley again, 2-0 for Stevenage. And here goes Byron Harrison to finish it, it's Harrison. Harrison Solly saves well, comes out to Schrute. Robin Schrute with his first goal for the club.
Starbridge of the Southern League Premier Division were looking to reach the second round for just the second time in their history. And they got off to the perfect start thanks to Ryan Rowe. The striker latched onto Drew Canavan's cross to put the home side ahead. But just two minutes later, Biggleswade Town were back in it. A long free kick into the box was headed on by Evan Key. His looping header making it one all. However, inside three minutes, Starbridge were back in front, and it was that man Rowe again. His calm finish restored the lead. The Glass Boys' place in the next round was put beyond doubt when Will Richards headed in from a corner at the near post. And five minutes from time, Starbridge completed the route with a fourth goal. Luke Bembo showed good pace and finish. The Glass Boys into round two. Stourbridge, the lowest ranked team left in the FA Cup, faced Stevenage at the Lamex Stadium, hoping to shock the League One strugglers, but conceded just before half time. Francois Zocco nodding home. Whatever was said at half time made no difference to the Southern League Premier Division club as they allowed Stevenage to make it 2 0 four minutes into the second period. Lucas Aikens reacting the quickest after Stourbridge failed to clear. Any hope that the Glass Boys could mount a comeback was shattered on the hour mark. Zocco was at his menacing best, powering down the right flank. The former Laval strikers cross eventually came to Luke Freeman. The former Arsenal junior, an FA Youth Cup winner, making it 3-0 from close range. Stevenage, who'd lost the last two league games conceding three in each, then put even more gloss on the scoreline. Freeman looked to tee up Felipe Moraes, who was brought down by Will Richards. The one-time Chelsea youngster dusted himself down and stepped up to convert from 12 yards to make it 4-0. Comfortable for Stevenage, the win easing the pressure on manager Graham Wesley. What does the FA Cup mean to you, Stu, personally? I think it means everything. It's the greatest cup competition you know, in, the, in this country and, and it's one that everybody strives to do as well as they can in. Um, you know, get, getting that first round draw and getting that big club in the first round is, is what everybody wants and, and, and push on as, as, as far as they can. I think for the club, historically, they've always had good cup runs um, and hopefully we can have another one this year. Well, Gary, you've been this far before. Um, it's not a new experience for you, but it still gets the juices flowing, doesn't it? No, absolutely. I mean, it's um, you know the fourth qualifying we won, you know, from the uh, what we cherish is reaching that first round. But uh, I will say, in terms of getting Kidderminster at home, it, it definitely feels like we've we've got there. And it's you know it's a massive game. It's uh, attracted a lot of uh, attention. They're seven miles down the road. They are kind of you know the top dogs in the area and. Uh, you know, it's it's a great draw. You know, for us to pit our wits against. Starbridge play in the Northern Premier League, level seven in case you're wondering. They enjoyed the start of dreams at the Crabble though, the sort of dream many a mere mortal has had. Only a few have been able to realise it, Chris Late being the latest one of them. Dover's run last season was one of the Cup's good news stories. Eventually beaten in round three by Crystal Palace, they equalised here just after the half hour. It wasn't pretty, but it was persistent. 
there's a time for placement and a time for smashing it, as were Thomas wisely opting for the latter there. His touch wasn't so solid, though, and it led to a double error of judgment from Mitch Walker. He got away with the lack of bearings just, but not the hack on Matt Dodd. A yellow card for the Dover keeper, and one which would have consequences after the break. With a quarter of the tie remaining, its two defining moments arrived in quick succession. The first of them was Walker's dismissal. His feather-like challenge enough to knock Carl Hawley over somehow, and it earned him a second caution and Stourbridge a penalty kick. Replacement keeper Andy Rafferty was sent on to save it and be an instant hero. Hawley denied him that opportunity with an emphatic finish. 2-1 up then, and on course for their third appearance in round two, a stage they've never been past, incidentally. Their best chance to pinch a replay fell to Ricky Modest. A faint touch of a last gasp nature from Stu Pierpoint helped ensure a famous win for the Midlands club. Their full-time celebrations said it all. It'll be a full house. I think there's, there'll be 2,000. Um, this is a great place when it's full. Um, you know, you do get a real rocking atmosphere, and you know, for opposition, it can be a little bit intimidating. Josh Payne can go for goal here. Looks for the cross instead. Off the goalkeeper, and Constable. Very much policing the right beat there. Easley fortunate not to concede a penalty there. Can they double their lead? Constable finding Strevens. Chance on here. And there's Payne. Oh, what a great finish from Josh Payne. And will almost certainly finish off Stourbridge. Still full of fight and endeavour here. Stourbridge. Can they force the issue here through Hawley? He's got the right side of Evans. And it's a penalty this time. Hawley needs to give Stourbridge a lifeline. Whoa, what a great save from Flitney. Struck it really well, Hawley. of 767 at the enclosed ground and it didn't take long for the host to make an impact Glen Southern pinching possession and smashing home a memorable opener well worth the prolonged celebration with the home support however they weren't left waiting long for some celebrations of their own more impressive technique on the way here this time from Dan Scar Stourbridge's hopes of reaching round two just like they did last year alive and well again with quite literally the last kick of the game listen carefully for the whistle here referee Robert Witten blowing for full time just as Favarel scored what he thought was a stunning winner the goal did not stand 1-1 was the final score and they will meet again there was an understandably lengthy post-match melee during which time Hawks keeper Ross Flitney was sent off the replay should be fun it's worth pointing out that Luke Benbow knows a good solid wall when he sees one. Every brick nice and level and perfectly straight. But last night in the light of the super moon, he spotted that Whitehawk's wall resembled a bodge job by a cowboy builder. So Luke, who supports Man United, 
decided not to bend it like Beckham, he bent it like Benbo instead to seal a famous 3-0 victory for Stourbridge. I knew once I got it over the wall, if I got it hit the target, it was a goal, and fortunately it went in. You've been a bit modest. That was a rather special strike, wasn't it? <laughs> well, it's, I've hit a few of them, so... Uh... <laughs> no wonder Stourbridge loved the FA Cup. Chris Late opened the scoring early in the second half before Benbow tapped in number two from close range to put the Glass Boys into the second round for the fifth time in eight years. We proved repeatedly this club is a big catchment area. They really love the FA Cup and the players responded. And uh, as I said, we didn't get lucky. We deserve to beat Whitehawks tonight. Like all the Starbridge players, Luke also has a full-time day job. He was up bright and early for an eight o'clock start this morning. So there was no chance of a celebration party last night. Straight back into work. I've got to uh, provide for my family and that. So can't be like all these Premier League footballers. Got to get up and graft, don't we? So. <laughs> A little bit envious of their lifestyle. Yeah, too late. I'm 25. <laughs> Maybe I might get a call off Jose. <laughs> the game looked like it was heading for a replay, but when Luke Benbow's 86 minute free kick dropped perfectly for Jake Duggan, the centre half made no mistake from close range to send the home fans wild before emulating Ballon d'Or winner Cristiano Ronaldo with a celebration. An embarrassing exit for Northampton, their 31st at this stage, more than any other side in the competition's history. Starbridge's reward, a first ever third round tie in which they'll face League Two Wickham Wanderers. How'd you keep them so relaxed? Um, I don't know, I think we've, we've, we've always managed to do it, you know, myself, John, Cliffy. Um, you know, we don't get phased too easily. Um, you know, hopefully we're very good at keeping them relaxed, but uh, they're, they're a good bunch. You know, they, they, they know when to have a, a good time, they know when to uh, have a bit of laughing and, and joking, but also they know when to be serious. And uh, um, hopefully, well not hopefully, when it comes to 3pm, they'll know that's uh, when the business needs to be done. It is the biggest game in the club's history. and. Uh, um, we all know what could be at stake in the fourth round, but to reach the third round is a great achievement for everybody involved with the football club. Sam Wood had come off the home bench right at the end of the first half. Right at the start of the second, he scored the game's opening goal. Having run half the length of the field and seen his shot well parried by Matt Gould, he hung around long enough to produce a tidy finish to end a scrappy few seconds in the Stourbridge box. Far from crumbling, though, Stourbridge got themselves level with 20 to play. Scrappiness in the home box this time, and Dan Scar reignited dreams of fairy tales for the Midlands club. Stourbridge knocked out Northampton in round two just to be here. They did it with an 86th minute winner and they so nearly stole another memorable late victory in this tie too. But for the very faintest of fingertips from the giant Blackman, they may well have been celebrating a truly famous upset. Tom Tonks denied giant killing superstar status. Whatever the level, the margins are so often so very fine. Instead, the decisive goal came at the other end with just seven left of the 90, courtesy of Wickham's resident beast, Addy Akinfenwa. A fine header from the big man from Joe Jacobson's equally fine cross. Huge relief for the chair boys and heartbreak for the glass boys. Their overall performance had more than merited a replay, but it wasn't to be. Wickham through to round four for the first time in 16 years. They went all the way to the semi-finals that season.